In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make some awesome looking tombstones out of foam. The materials you're going to need are foam board, sandpaper, some kind of wooden stakes, cutting or heating tools, marker, paint brushes, acrylic paints for decorating, and then your base paint. For more information on the materials you'll need, check the description box below. For the first step, you're going to trace the shapes you want onto your foam. There are a couple of ways you can do this. I freehanded it, but you can also use Photoshop and print out some templates, or use scrap paper or newspaper to make your own patterns. It's a good idea to figure out the rough sizes and shapes you want so you know how much foam you're going to need. I really recommend using a non-permanent marker for this um, because when you trace it, the ink is going to bleed through most of the paints which I learned the hard way. Um, but I used a highlighter and a ruler to sketch out my designs. The foam is easy to dent or crack, so be careful. Next, you're gonna cut out the basic shapes. They do sell specialty heated tools for cutting foam, but if you're cheap like me, go ahead and use any razor blades, saws, or cutting knives that you already have. Be sure to have some spare blades because the foam dulls them rather quickly. It's gonna start to make your edges jagged and really rough, and it's gonna be a pain to cut. I personally didn't care if my edges were cracked because I was going for a spooky, kind of desolate look, but that's up to you. When you're done, the pieces will pop right out. You can cut off any flashing or reshape the sides if you didn't get it right the first time. This isn't technically a whole step on its own, but after you've cut all of your pieces out, you can go ahead and name them so you know which pieces are going to have which epitaphs. And here comes the fun part, tracing all the details. Again, I'm really lazy, so I just freehanded all the text and used some reference photos to get the look I wanted. If you want it to be neater, get some stencils or print some out. The only thing I actually did stencil was the rose because I wanted it to be nice and detailed. I used a ballpoint pen and ran over it several times to lightly indent the foam. Doing these stencils makes carving a lot easier later on, and you can fix any mistakes without ruining the whole piece. I'm not going to show me drawing out all of the tombstones because that would take an entire separate video. So I'm just going to show you this one so you can have an idea of what to do. This is where it gets tricky, carving out the foam. There are a lot of options for doing the carving itself. Here I'm using an X-Acto knife to carve out my text. Unfortunately my blade was dull and I didn't have any replacements. But if you do have sharp blades this works really well. The next option is heat tools. They make everything super easy, but do emit noxious fumes, so you have to work in a well-ventilated area. I was on a time and budget crunch, so I just improvised using my dulled X-Acto blade and a candle. This actually worked pretty decently, but it was really tedious waiting for the blade to reheat again and again and again, and the fumes are still really nasty. You can also use markers, pens, or sculpting tools to indent the foam but you have to be careful with this technique because it can still crack the foam itself. If you're unsure, test out all of these tools on some of the scrap foam before you try anything and that way you know what works best for you. Unless you did a perfect job cutting out the shapes, you're going to want to do some cleaning up. You can do this before or after the main details are done, I just did mine after. You can sand down any imperfections or areas that need shaping with regular sandpaper. To add some character to the pieces, I'm going to wreck them up. I cut jagged edges to make it look like it had been damaged and score marks for hairline cracks. I also used a lighter to burn fake bullet holes. Heat guns are really good for making it look worn away like real stone too. This is just a close up of how I use the lighter to make the bullet holes and you can see the foam melting with the heat. Once you're satisfied with how your pieces look, it's time for the paint job. Painting is a little tricky. Now spray paint is quick, but it's gonna melt your foam. If you want your stone looking really weathered and aged, it can work for you, but I'd still advise testing it out first. If you wanna preserve your work, you're gonna need to use a latex base coat or a sealant like Mod Podge to form a barrier. If you don't care about using spray paint, latex or acrylics are gonna work just fine. I use the cheapest latex paint I could find in a light gray. As for the brushes, foam ones work really well for a stone texture and bristles work well for wood grain. Depending on what kind of paint you used, it can take anywhere from two to three coats to reach full opacity. You should do the front, sides, backs, and edges. Weathering is technically an optional step, but it takes your cartoonish tombstones to a whole new level. To add dimension, you can use black paint in the lettering and grooves 
water it down to make sure it gets in all the little crevices and then wipe away with a damp paper towel. You can also add touches of white or light gray to raise textures to make it appear more like stone. Green or yellow can be used to add moss or lichen and different shades of brown to make it look dirty and gross. It's up to you what kind of look you want. For some I wanted them very worn and gritty and for others I wanted them to look a little cleaner. Make sure to weather the sides and backs too. I used charcoal to make it look like a curse had left a scorch mark on Tom Riddle's tombstone. Here are some quick shots of all my tombstones after I was done painting them. And just a quick little detail shot of the rose. And here are some detail shots of the bullet holes. We're almost done you guys. All we have to do is add the stakes. You may need to use two to three stakes to keep them steady. I used three sixteenth inch sticks because my board was so thin. And then I cut the tips into skewers with some scissors and jammed them in the bottom. Be careful with the thinner foam boards as the skewers can accidentally pierce through them. And you're done. You've got your tombstone. Stick them out in the yard and make it a little extra spooky with skulls, fencing, signs, upturned dirt, zombie parts, crows, cobwebs, and spiders. You can even add lighting to put a spotlight on all your hard work. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helped you out a little bit and have a very happy Halloween.